was that intro have you ever seen copy made like that before uh i've always been intrigued by one of these copy towers it's called a kyoto cold brew tower or a yama cold brew tower it's crazy it takes three hours to brew eight cups i believe this is an eight cup carafe they have a 25 cup version that takes 13 hours 13 hours Hopefully you guys enjoyed that intro sequence, had a lot of fun shooting it. Although it was quite challenging given the fact that I was losing light extremely fast. I swear to God, anytime I ever try to shoot something like that, or just shoot something in general, the light just seems to want to disappear much, much faster. So obviously, as you can see, it's you know the sun has gone down now. All the light still looks fantastic right now. Um, and I have my coffee, so it's wonderful. Anyways, today I wanted to talk about our influences, not just how they play a big part in our lives as individuals, but also as creatives, as artists, as photographers, filmmakers, whatever it is that you do. I wanted to talk about that. So sit back, relax, and let's talk about it. What is going on everyone? I hope you're all having a fantastic day today. My name is Taylor. I'm a photographer and filmmaker based here in San Francisco. And recently I've been thinking a lot about my influences. I think we often think about our inspirations, who or what inspires us, but I don't think we ever think too much about our influences. I wanted to really boil it down to a key individual. And the person I landed on is Peter McKinnon. For those of you who don't know, Peter McKinnon is a photographer, filmmaker, and YouTuber. Way back when I was in high school, my teacher showed me a video of his. And ever since then, I immediately got immersed into the world of photography and filmmaking. And I knew since that point, that was exactly what I wanted to do. My teacher is named Mr. Barris, wonderful guy. And he showed a video from Peter McKinnon talking about B-roll. Now, quick. Overview, B-roll is basically supplementary footage, so it's this kind of footage over top of your A-roll, which is this footage. And Peter McKinnon did an amazing job. He included examples, visual references, images, like literally walking you through how to record B-roll and how to cut that together, and it was just an incredible video. It was very well done, it was immersive, and it was very much engaging. After my teacher showed us that video, he told us that Peter's channel has a lot of great content as well, and he recommends watching uh, some of his other videos. So as soon as I got home, I immediately immersed myself into all of his videos. And from that point forward, I was following his content everywhere. He is primarily a landscape photographer and he does product photography as well. Early on, I didn't have the means to take high quality images because I didn't own a camera. I was just using my iPhone. I started out shooting my cats a lot. I would just take pictures of them. That was like my early stages of my portrait photography. And then I started weaving in product photography as well as self-portrait photography. These two images right here, self-portraits, of myself, I set my phone up, wedged it in between a couple of books on a stool, and then I put on a 10 second self timer. I ran over 
and then I took these images and it took quite a few tries to get them. But I did a lot of stuff like that. And then when I finally got the opportunity to buy a camera, I started experimenting more with self-portraits and product photography. I was just using the gear that I had available. Eventually I started adding to my collection and I got this backdrop and some of these like really cheap LED light panels. And then I would use an old wood table that we had um, in our living room. I just bring it into my room and I kind of set up this mini like studio setup and I would experiment with product photography. Another influence that Peter McKinnon had on me was just like lifestyle in general. Uh, I started getting really interested in tattoos, which I've still yet to get one, but it's gonna happen one of these days. Another thing that was a huge influence on me was coffee, which by the way, I have coffee right now. Uh, another thing that was a huge influence was just um, everyday carry. Things like pocket knives and wallets, leather goods, that sort of stuff, like what you carry in your pockets and a big part of Peter McKinnon's life. You know, he even started a whole brand around that as well called Pete's Pirate Life, which I've heavily invested in collectible, like handcrafted items such as coins, pens, notebooks, all of which I've taken photos of you know, product photos of and had a lot of fun. He's even made a hot sauce. And I think it really helps shape where I was going. And all of that, as cheesy as it sounds, literally did lead me to where I am now, pursuing my dreams of being a filmmaker. Now, Peter is an independent filmmaker. He, you know, is primarily on YouTube and he, he's done some short documentaries and stuff and posted them there. That's the kind of filmmaking he does primarily, right? For me, I was into the commercial filmmaking, into that style of filmmaking, but as time went on, the more into it I got, the more into making movies, like movies you see on the big screen. Let's jump forward in time to when I first came out here to San Francisco. Everything was new. And I was nervous at first, but I really wanted to explore portraiture. And I started reaching out on social media and just asking like, hey, I wanna build up my portfolio, would you be interested in shooting? And that led me to having some amazing shoots and getting to meet some amazing people and making a lot of great memories. There's lots of little stories within photography that I absolutely love. Like for instance, this shoot here, this was a beach shoot and it was a bit of a hike down to where we needed to go. And I did not want to take off my shoes because we got to hike back up once we're done. But in order to get to the area where I wanted to shoot, I need to cross over some rocks the waves of the ocean came in and drenched my feet completely. I was completely drenched. When it comes to photography, you do anything. You do anything to get the shot, even filmmaking. You'll do a lot of crazy stuff to get the shot. Like this shoot here. This was a euphoria inspired shoot. I'm under a chair. <laughs> I don't know why I'm under a chair. I was also using saran wrap as like diffusion so I can soften the image up a little bit since I didn't have any filters. So that was kind of like a cool little hack you can use, but it just looks so funny. One of my favorite things about photography is just the people that you get to meet. I made a lot of friends through doing photography and a lot of friendships started through photography and then I just got connected with even more people after that. A large part of my friend group now started because of one shoot that I did during my first semester here. Now I wanna dive a little bit into Peter McKinnon's influences. One of the first photographers that Peter McKinnon was influenced by is a guy by the name of Peter Lick. He's an Australian landscape photographer. Peter made a video talking about the story of the first time he walked into one of Lick's galleries. As soon as he walked in there, he just was hit with massive prints, literally sizes of the walls. He says the lighting was just right, literally making him feel like they came alive. And he knew from that point, moving forward, that that's exactly what he wanted to do. He knew he wanted to be a photographer. That's exactly how I felt when I watched that first video of his in Mr. Barrows' class. Another photographer is Peter Andrew. Peter Andrew's also a landscape photographer. He also does a lot of fine art photography, shooting on white backgrounds, shooting these really clean, really crisp, detailed images. He even has some of his work framed in his kitchen and he made a whole video kind of sitting down with him, talking to him and kind of going through his process. Now, one of the things that Peter Andrews says is a lot of his ideas start out as just a camera test. He's just like, oh, what would this look like? I'm gonna test that out. Another thing Peter Andrew talks about in McKinnon's video is that you can't think about photography in a commercial sense. Like, 
I can't print that and that can't be up in a gallery or I can't sell that as a print or I can't make money off of this and so on. You just gotta go for it. And it's similar to the idea of thinking about gear, which brings me to another photographer that Peter McKinnon has featured. His name is Matt Barnes. He is also a fantastic photographer. Matt Barnes has done some massive campaigns, working with some huge artists and a lot of influential people all around the world, and has done some huge, huge, huge projects. He could not care less about cameras. If anybody asks him, he's like, oh, what camera should I got, buy for this? Should I buy this camera? Should I buy that camera? Should I buy this lens, that lens? He's like, I could care less about cameras. And I think that's a really interesting thing to bring up because I think especially young photographers nowadays, we get so engulfed in all the gear that's out there and we see some of our favorite photographers and filmmakers using this expensive, high quality gear. And they always tell us, it, the gear does not matter. And I think that is true. Even for me, I'm still working off of an old camera that I've had for a few years. It's dated and it's gotten to the point where it's starting to slow me down because my skills and knowledge have surpassed the capabilities that my camera can provide. But I'm not ever gonna let that stop me. I still shoot with my camera and I still love it. The evolution of somebody and their work is really fun to see because not only has my work evolved, but so has Peter McKinnon's and getting to see that change over time, the, the style and his content on his channel, the types of videos he makes, I will definitely continue to be influenced and inspired by Peter McKinnon. And I'm very, very excited to see what's in store for myself. I really hope you guys enjoyed. Photography and filmmaking has really brought me close with a lot of people. I formed some really great friendships from that and I continue to strive to do that. So that is it for me. Enjoy. <laughs>